Hey peeps, welcome back to my channel. Happy Ostara, blessed Ostara and spring equinox. And I hope you are all doing well. Um, I think I'm just gonna be chatting with you a bit today, a bit about magic, a bit about life as a witch and also just a little bit about my life in general. So stick around and make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell if you want to get notified of new videos. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up or a pause up. Pause, pause, pause. <laughs> and uh, we'll get started here in a minute. So as you can tell, I have changed my hair color yet again. I went for a color called Passion Berry. And I love it. It is so bright and it is so vibrant and it feels the perfect color to welcome the spring in. Kaylee wants pet it. Kaylee's a good girl. And Kaylee says, hi, all you, all you viewers that watch mommy. And she knows that you really watch for her, as is should be. Anyway, today is the spring equinox. It is one of our eight Sabbaths that we have, our holy days. For those of us who are pagan, it is the time of new beginnings, the time of spring, the time of clearing out to make way for the new. It is the time of the goddess and new life and fresh ideas and clarity. And we get that in many ways. We can get that through meditation. We get that through clearing out our physical space and our spiritual space. So many witches, including myself, use what's called a besom or a basom. Um, it's basically a sacred room. And you can see mine up there to the corner of my head. It is a handmade room and I have decorated it. And it's used to sweep the air and sweep negativity out. And it is used to sweep unwanted influences out. And it's used to sweep stagnant energy out. You can also use a bell and ring the energy, um, basically shake things up and wake up the energy. Because at this time of year, a lot of energy around our homes and our bodies and our auras, it's stagnant from from winter. And it's not that we haven't been doing anything, but the earth has been quiet. Um, in many, many places across the earth, the land has become barren. It's gone into hibernation. And our energy sort of does that too. So when you use a bell, it shakes through the energy. It, it shakes up the vibrations of the energy. Uh, you can also use sacred smoke which, you know, burning herbs is a long held tradition in many, many countries. And uh, you can use sage, you can use cedar, you can use, you can use incense if you like, uh, lemon and lavender and lemongrass is a good one. There are so many energy cleansing herbs that you can burn and just use the, the smoke to waft through and then sweep the smoke out. Basically the smoke attracts the energy, the stagnant energy, and then you sweep it out with your basin. Uh, you can also soak herbs in water and spray that water to clear the air. I do that a lot because smoke's not good for my lungs. So I usually use sage water and I spray the air around me whenever I need to shake off the, the negative energy that's come my way or sort of a stagnant energy or when I'm feeling kind of like in a slump, it wakes me up. Peppermint is a really good herb to clear, clarify the mind. Again, just soak it in water, spray peppermint spray around and it'll wake up your senses. And as I said, Ostara is the spring equinox. It is the time of rabbits and chicks and you know young lambs. And it's the time of the goddess waking the earth up and bringing things to life again. 
a lot of the symbols of Easter were stolen from the pagans. And of course, that's well known. I'm not slandering anybody here. It's just a fact. But the egg at Easter, the egg is a symbol of fertility. And so is the March Hare or the rabbit. It's a symbol of fertility and it's a symbol of the great goddess. And this is her time when she walks through the world and wakes it up again, at least in our hemisphere. In the southern hemisphere, they're going into Mabon, the fall equinox at this point. So they are sort of closing down for the year and they're in their harvest days at this point. I always find it so interesting how it's opposite on the other ends of the world, but it is, you know, here, here we're at Ostara, there, they're at Maybon, and uh, a lot of people forget that. In different places, the customs are different, the traditions are going to be similar, but differently placed because of the difference in seasons. There are places in the world where the seasons don't change much at all. So, you know, what we do for our traditions here might not work for them. It's all going to depend on where you live and what you are looking for and how the cycles of the seasons go. For me, this is a time of starting new ideas. It's a time of renewed energy on projects. I often started those projects come Samhain because that's the first of the year for pagans, November 1st. And now is a time when I'm renewing them or I'm letting some of them go. There's no harm in letting go of a project or a practice that no longer serves you. I know that sometimes we have to carry through a project to its end because we need to for school or we need to for work or we need to because we promised somebody. But on certain projects, if it's no longer serving your needs, no, no shame in saying I'm starting new, I'm, I'm picking up something new. Let it go. Let it be. So yes, Ostara, the time of new beginnings. It's also a time when it feels like the fairy community, the fae community, and I say that as not talking about humans in any shape or form, but the actual fae, the actual um, fairy, nature spirits, uh, the children of the gods, the Tuatha Dé Danann, you know, they're, this is a time when they are very active. And I usually find from my own experience that I connect most with the Fae during Ostara, Mabon, especially Mabon, summer solstice and winter solstice. For some reason, they seem most active during that time for me. Or maybe that's just when I perceive them most. But I have been seeing a lot of shadow creatures in the house. And I'm not talking like shadow people in my books, which shadow people do exist, by the way. Uh, they are dangerous. They are frightening. And that's why they seem so real when I write about them, because they actually do exist. But I'm talking about that little shadow out of the corner of your eye. You catch a glimpse of movement. You look, nothing's there, but you know something was there. Only sometimes I, I have very good perception for things like that. So I will actually see the form moving. I will see the shape of, uh, you know, some little creature, some little fey creature. Now the fey and I interact a lot because I am pledged. I am priestess of a goddess who rules over the fey. I have been working with the Fae for many years, and the Dark Fae in particular. The just suits my nature more than the Light Fae. But yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting path to walk. I get a lot of questions on how do you, how do you see the Fae? Or how do you, you know, see spirits? There's no one way to tell you 
because for everyone it's going to be different and some people may never see them and some people may see them all the time i see dead people you know a lot of times i will feel them i will sense their presence and i've come over the years i mean i've been doing this for 40 some years and unofficially for a lot longer since i was a little kid but over the years i've developed a way of inner sight where i can look in a direction and if there's something there i can see it in my mind and sometimes it will shimmer into appearance physically sometimes not a lot of times not but i will know where things are i will feel where they are i will sense them i will hear them i have clear audience quite quite a bit i have ever since i was a kid i will hear things on other realms and I hear voices, <laughs> the voices in my head, only they're not in my head, they're out, out there. But I will sense them, I will sometimes see them. My inner sight knows they are there. I can see them through my psychic sense. I also sense spirits a lot, but I don't tend to let them come in the house. I keep our house quite warded against spirits because, as I've said in many books, spirits can trick you. Spirits can lie. One can say it's your grandpa and it's not going to be your grandpa. And just because a spirit tells you something doesn't mean it's the truth. That A lot of spirits are, they have a nasty bent to them. Not all. There are some spirit guides which are not always ghosts the way we think of spirits there are some that are here to help us but there are a number of creatures out there who delight in taking either playing pranks on people or just being downright nasty so it's something to be very careful of when you are working in this realm a lot of people want to know how to celebrate the sabbaths when they're alone. Now there's a number of wonderful, wonderful rituals online that you can find. I recommend Google, you know, I recommend searching on Ostara ritual for solitary practitioner. I have had some in my books before. They are not currently in print, but I am revamping some of the nonfiction to get it out there. My Embracing the Moon is in print, but it didn't give you Sabbath rituals per se. But a good ritual to do during this time is a grounding and cleansing ritual. Actually, I recommend it, you know, doing this at least once every few weeks because it just helps keep you centered. In fact, I can lead you in a short meditation now. But one, do not do this if you are driving. Turn off this video until you are aware you can do this safely. Do not do this if you are walking. Again, turn off the video. Do not do this unless you are where you can do it safely. Three, if you are undergoing deep depression or if you are looking for something to help you pull yourself out of a mire, I suggest you go look for some professional help because I am not a counselor. This is not intended to help you with depression. It is not intended to help you with suicidal thoughts. It is not intended to help you if you need professional help. This is to help you clear the energy and let it go and ground yourself. So, with those caveats, I recommend stopping the video if you are not ready for this. And if you are, we'll begin here in just a moment. Okay, I assume that you are at a place where it's safe, that you feel comfortable, that you aren't in a place where you can be hurt. Sit down, put your feet on the floor, put your hands like this. You can rest them on the arms of a chair. I want you to close your eyes 
and take three very slow, deep breaths and let them out again slowly. One, two, three. I want you to listen to my voice and follow. Imagine that you are sitting in a field. There is a forest nearby. It's twilight and the stars are just beginning to appear overhead. You can hear the sounds of the birds calling home to their nests. There's a light breeze ruffling through your hair. You know that you are in a safe, protected space where nothing can harm you. I want you to visualize a ring of light forming around the space where you are sitting. It is a ring of pure, intense, beautiful golden light and it is protective and it will allow nothing to enter. Now I want you to visualize that your feet, which are on the ground, are against the grass, have vines and tendrils emerging from the soles of your feet, and they plunge down into the earth like a plant rooting deeply. See the vines go down through the earth, down through stone and bone and crystal, down through the deepest, darkest bedrock and soil, down through places where there were villages once upon the face of the earth and now have been buried, down past layer after layer of time toward the center of the earth. These roots dig deeply and hold you firm and fast so that you will not topple over. You will not blow away. See those roots going down further and further until they crack the very center of the earth and plunge into that molten core that keeps our planet alive. They root deeply within this golden magma, within the lava that forms the lifeblood of our planet. And you can feel the warmth and strength of the earth starting to filter up through these roots. It comes up, up through the layers of stone and bone and crystal, up through the layers of bedrock and soil. It follows the roots coming from your feet and it meets your flesh and fills you with a warmth that is healing and energizing and vital. Feel this energy from the earth flowing through your body, re-energizing you, recharging you connecting you with that upon which we walk, connecting you with the goddess, with her body, with the strength of her nature. Take three deep breaths. One, two, Three. Now, I want you to 
turn your attention to the palms of your hands. In the center of your palm, of each palm, I want you to see a silver beam come flaring out of your hands, aiming toward the sky above, toward the sky filled with stars, filled with stardust, toward the galaxies reeling overhead. And those silver beams flow up toward the sky and they meet the energy of the stars that are shining down on you and merge together. The energy from the stars comes flowing down into your hands like silver chimes on the wind. And it fills you with a cleansing energy and a magical energy that rushes through your body and in quick, quickens your spirit and enlivens your heart and your soul. Feel that energy race through your body, strengthening you, holding you firm. Now, feel the energy that has come up from the earth merge with the energy that has come down from the stars. And they meet and they entwine and they begin to cycle like a wheel up through your chakras, up through your feet, into your spine, up through your spine, through your spinal cord, through your neck, up through your crown chakra, up to the stars, and they wheel down, and they land in your palm again, this merging of energies, and it flows back down deep through your arms, down your spine, down into the earth, where it meets and merges again with the magma. And this continual cycle of energy recharges and cleanses you, clearing out old stagnant energy, clearing out that which is ready to be let go of, clearing out that which you no longer need. Take three deep breaths. Know that this energy is yours to draw on any time you need it. It comes from the stars, it comes from the soil, it comes from the goddess, it comes from the gods. I want you to feel this cycle running through you over and over again. And when it is ready, when it is full, when you feel quickened and enlivened, I want you to take another deep breath. Now I want you to see yourself at the bottom of a staircase. And you are beginning to come up the stairs, one stair at a time, toward waking consciousness, toward being fully alert and aware. And as I count from 10 to one, each step brings you closer to the surface, closer to awareness. 10, you're at the bottom of the staircase. Nine, you are moving upwards toward full consciousness. Eight, you are becoming more aware. Seven, you are becoming alert and clear headed. Six, you are beginning to breathe easily again and becoming more aware of your surroundings. Five, you can see the top of the staircase. Four, 
you begin to hear everything that's going on around you and the forest is now a distant memory. Three, you are nearing the top of the staircase. You are aware of whatever is going on around you. Two, your eyes begin to open and you look around and you are fully grounded. One, you are back to where you started, only clear, clear headed, alert, and feeling renewed and recharged. Now take one more deep breath, let it out. And I want you to stand up and shake yourself out. Give your body a good shake. And there we have a grounding exercise. I recommend that you go get something to eat, a little bit of protein, maybe a little fruit, but definitely some protein to fully ground your body and that you put off driving until you know you're fully aware and awake because self-hypnosis can do wonders for us, but it can also leave us kind of, kind of in the ozone a little bit. I hope you enjoyed this grounding exercise for Ostara. I hope it helps. You can come back and use it anytime you need, but remember, don't use it when you are going to be driving. Don't use it when you are having to focus on other things. Wait till a time when you have some privacy and some quiet, and then do it. So let me know how you liked this. I hope you did. I hope you have a wonderful day and bright blessings, and take care. And remember, the energy that you feel in this exercise, it's not coming from me. It's coming from the earth. It's coming from the goddess. It's coming from the stars. And it's coming from you. Because we make our own best magic. So, take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye.